We met at De Beers, Diamond Trading Company. He was working there. Um, he was a project manager. It was for, a working day. Uh, sorry? It was a working day. Yeah, so it wasn't day. even a weekend or anything. No, I was 16. I used to go to school. Um, I was learning English and literature, having, getting my diploma there. Mm -hmm. And then my uncle used to send me to De Beers to learn how to use the telex machine. Okay. You're too young. You wouldn't even know what telex yeah, is. Yeah, I need a walk. I crap. Indeed. I went in there to learn how to use a telex machine and um, after school, that right. is. So sometimes I go to the coffee room and then John will be there. And I think he used to wait till I was going in the coffee room and he'll be hanging around. And I used to see him and I'll ignore him because, I mean, I wasn't into boys no, or, oh, was, uh, or girls for oh, that yes, matter. But no, I wasn't. Oh, I, really? I wasn't, I don't know. My parents, it's not like they stopped us talking to people, but mm -hmm. I was so used to my own company that I really don't like. Other people's company. Yeah, and also he was trying too hard, a bit try hard. It's always there. But at the end of like, the day, you, you fell for it. it. Can I? Well, it took four years, and and it sort of just you know, four years. Four. Four years. I don't know if it's working here, No, no, no. So why four years? I know because I was young. The gentleman was, was digging you. Come he was on. digging like he followed me everywhere. You know, the first time he met me, he told one of his friends who told me on our wedding day right. that John said to me the first day he met you that he was going to marry you. The very thing he said. The very thing he said. First to his time friend. he saw you. Yes, that he was going to marry me. And this man had never been around black people. I mean, he. I was in a company where it's all, you know, completely white. He's never actually dated a, a black woman. He worked in South Africa for a little bit, mm -hmm. but they were in camp, you know, in the right. beers. It wasn't like, you know. Right. So I think for me, for him, he was shocked that he. He gravitated towards, towards somebody he's never, you yeah. know, because all his girlfriends have mm. been mm. sort of white, model-esque, tall, like sexy. And there I was, this five foot four African woman that he fell in love with. It's so weird. And after four years, you finally said I yes finally to him. I finally said yes to him. Mm. And I didn't turn up mm. at the date. I stood him up. And then... Stephanie. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? I said yes. And then he went to wait for me. I didn't go. Oh, Shedda. No, my Shedda. I just, I just thought, mm, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So you stood him up, you didn't show up. I stood him up, I didn't show up. And then he saw me at work um, a few weeks later. And, and then he said, um, you know, can we do this for real now? And I said, mm, maybe. He said, will you turn up? I said, mm. Anyway, I turned up. It was um, Greenwich. He took me on a boat ride. Right. In Greenwich, it was it was lovely. He was so yes. such a romantic. Oh, so Oda Hokai, we are now checking it at that. Oh, not me. My man can't because you were just pretending about the whole thing. And yet, like mm, like like you'd see his face and go, oh my god, he's so gorgeous. No, it was more when he walked away, his <laughs> gorgeous. He had like this perfectly formed, tight ass, and I used to look at him. And John is six foot three, so it's like, you know, he was like cut and, hmm. but. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> no, no, but this is so weird. Normally, a mama would go that direction. I mean, checking a woman's backside. But for a woman to check a man's backside, that's weird. Oh, I was looking at his backside. We are weirdo, Kakarawang. I'm a bit of a weirdo. I know. I know. I can't help it. I mean, maybe, you see, I'm a tomboy. Can you imagine? I should have been a man. I don't know. But he had a really nice. And also, he was such a gentleman. Uh -huh. and he was so soft spoken, but strong. Let me tell you something. My uncle is very wealthy. Uh -huh. John is, you know, does well for himself, you know. And when my uncle, he wasn't happy that I was going to marry a white man. A white man. man, oh. So I remember when I introduced John to, to him, he tried to get John on his side as, by saying, like, you know, I'll employ you, be fine. You know, if you're coming to this family where, you know, this is our child and blah, blah. I remember John telling him that well, I don't mm. particularly need you, but mm. if my my wife wants to be, mm. um, uh, you know, um, ask you for anything. That's her problem, but right. I don't need you. Right. Nobody talks to my uncle like that. Have you seen, like, if it's an African Who man? Who yes, Never, ever. I said, the son in law, but Never, ever. And I, I remember that was the moment I actually fell in love with John Moore because oh. he didn't need that money. Right. Well, no, he didn't come into this marriage because he Your had... Your uncle has my uncle money. Has money. He had his own. Right. I mean, to be honest, they probably were... At par. Par, yeah, but it's just my uncle, he, he loved me and he was mm. also very controlling. Mm. So, mm. Mm. but John just didn't fall for it. <laughs> so recently, you pulled a fast one on John. I'm not sure if it was your own way of checking if he hadn't cheated on you yet, or it was actually somebody who was asking. How many years have you been married? 34. 34 and five children. 
So look me in the face. Mm. Tell me what your heart tells you. John has never cheated. Oh, no, my, my heart. I don't know, my, my, heart, heart, <laughs> my heart tells me he's never cheated. That's what your heart but tells me. But my head sometimes will go to a space where, mm. would I know? I mean, it's like, would I he know? He would never tell you. No, no, he, John. Do you yeah, think he would tell you? No, John, to be honest, if he cheated, he'll tell me because I would know. Because me, no, no. Ah. See, I have a knife under my pillow, so sometimes I say, you know, if you've cheated, this knife is coming out. <laughs> no, you don't mean that, do you? <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait. The knife is coming Stephanie, you ready? No, My, you don't mean African that, do dance you? African dance can cry. Not with a Are you funny? Wakanda forever. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't mean that literally, do you? Say, oh, what's the kind of pillow I say? Oh, no, I do. But I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, I don't know what to do. It's like, it's like, are you doing, are, are you doing, no, it's a joke. Oh, are you no, doing no, no. it? <laughs> so you've never been angry to a point where you actually feel like pulling it Oh, no, 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 and no. It's not a joke. You the don't get angry? About it. I don't get angry. You I don't. get angry with John, yes, about little things. But then I talk about it. Mm. And then your, your mind is spiraling. You're thinking about all kinds of things. So okay. I deal with it there and then. I say, let's just talk about it. Let's deal with it. And then we talk it through out till it doesn't matter anymore. Have you ever cheated on John? No. I'd like to though. Stephanie, don't don't look away. Oh no, have I've you, never cheated on have John. Have you ever cheated on never. John? Never. Never cheated on hand John. Hand on your heart. A hand on my heart. 